Hi, folks. Andrew here, Top Fitness Strategies. I am the face who runs the place. And again, we got a great interview coming on for you today. This is going to be a little bit different than usual. And, and I, I tell you what, I'll bring you right on now. My, my guest this evening is Kathleen Trotter. Kathleen is a personal trainer, a nutrition and life coach. She's also an author and media personality. And I, I feel so honored to have her on because now she can say with all that, that she's a guest on Top Fitness Strategies. So welcome, Kathleen. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure to be here. I've listened to some of your interviews and I think that our philosophy meshes and it's going to be an awesome conversation. Okay. One of the things I like to do, Kathleen, when I start is I like to tell the audience how I come across you or come across the, 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 the folks I interview. So behind the bat cave a little bit, as I like to say, I scour the internet, I scour the YouTube to find folks that who have been interviewed already. And that's just a, 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 a hobby of mine I like to do because I'm in the health and fitness business. And I came across a gentleman by the name of Kevin English several months ago, and I interviewed him. And so he's also in the same field I am, the fitness over 50 crowd. And as I'm going through watching some of his interviews, listening to it, came across yours. You've been interviewed by, by him at least two or three times, if I, if I recall. So I said, I went to your website, and one of the first things I saw on your blog, you talked about growth mindset. Now, <laughs> I am all about the mindset thing when it comes to this health and fitness stuff. I think the mindset is the, 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 the cornerstone to everything when it comes to being yeah. healthy. Well, it has to be, right? Because your mind is like your mindset is living how your mind is set. So if you have um, a mind that is set to look for the negative and to feel shame and to feel frustrated and not to find solutions, you will always find the negative, find excuses, right? So you have to work on your mindset because if knowledge was enough, this is a Derek Sivers quote, if knowledge was enough, we would all be billionaires with six pack abs, right? Like, we know what to do most, right? Like you, most of us know what to do with health and wellness, like do some yes. more walking, drink some more water, but it's the mindset that allows you to connect the dots between wanting and actually doing and that's why it, none of the other stuff really matters if that you don't have the mind that can actually make you do all of the habits and all of the actions that will create your fitter future self so it's literally the mindset is everything you say that so much more elegantly than i do <laughs> now you're used to a, uh the, the, your interview host being a lot more polished than i am i'll promise you that when we get started here i, I i'll probably, I probably first mess of all you're pretty Oh, you're very polished. What is this like negative self-talk? If it's you not quiet, negative. I would not, that's a, I would not be okay with that. You are smart and you're intelligent and you're funny and we're going to have an awesome conversation. And I also think that mindset is so connected to self-talk. So, you know, I tell people that I want to know how they're talking to themselves and we want to, you know, work on that. So yeah, anyway. You know, speaking of that, and this is off topic a little bit, a book I read 20, 25 years ago, and I'm sure you've heard of this book. It says it's called uh, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Hem Hemstedler, I do believe. That book, I read it once and it completely changed the way I thought about myself and everything else, even though it doesn't seem like it's one of the things I just said a second ago. <laughs> so, all first of all, you just gave stuff, you talking all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but what I love about that is you literally just gave yourself data that you don't need to put yourself down because you just taught me a book. I've never heard of that book. That book is out. I'm going to put that on my Audible. I'm going to read it. Um, I'm going to listen to it, you know, and, and um, it, I'm going to learn something. And so you, we are more quote unquote polished and learned than you even give yourself credit well, for. And you so, so much. <laughs> you, well, no, but it's true. And so much of this health and wellness game is learning how to look for data that keeps us moving and growing forward. And that's part of what the growth mindset is, right? It's like, I can do that. I might not be able to do it yet, right? So the book that it comes from is Carol Dweck's book, Mindset. But it's this idea that every experience we have is just data that we can learn from. And it's so important because we are all going to fall off our fitness course. We're all going to have to course correct. And we all have to learn how to course correct quickly, get back on our horse and get back on a more informed rider. And part of what we can learn about is how we talk to ourselves. And if how we talk to ourselves is helping the situation or hurting the situation. Um, and so many times we talk to ourselves in a way that we would not talk to our loved one. You wouldn't say that to your child or, you know, your, your pa elderly parent that you're looking after, or even your best friend. We have these roommates in our head that are so unhelpful 
Um, and, but I, I'm, I do it too. I was teaching a group coaching course a couple of years ago and I'll never forget my technology was failing and mm -hmm. I'm not good with technology. Um, and I was starting to freak out and I was saying these really mean things to myself. And I was like, Oh, I'm so bad at this. Blah, blah. And one of the people in the course, she kind of put up her hand and she goes, Kathleen, I was like, yeah. She's like, would you be okay if we were talking to ourselves that way? And I was like, Oh my God. Like she was so right. Right. So it's, I guess my point only is it's very, it's easier to see in other people what it's hard to see in ourselves. And that's partly why it could be really useful to have a therapist or a best friend or even a journal or a coach where you can sort of say, okay, well, this is how I'm talking to myself and let's growth mindset that and say, okay, well, this is how I have been. And is it useful? Is it not useful? Um, am I using more shaming uh, language? Is it just putting mm -hmm. me down? Is it helping me negative spiral? Like, where is that? And, and mainly... Is it useful? And if it's if if it's useful, then keep going. And if it's not, change it, right? Because what's the point? Like, what, what's like the? Sometimes I'll say to my clients, like in a jokey way, like, well, and how's that working for you, right? Like they they'll be doing something, I'll be like, hey, well, you have to move, change that. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, I don't know, if I, I don't know if I want to, I don't, you know, like, well, but if you say you want to be a fitter, future, favorite version of you, right? So how's right. what you're doing now? How's it working for you? And if it's not working for you then you got you to gotta evolve. You got to have that growth mindset of saying like, just because I'm not doing it perfectly now, first of all, perfect doesn't exist. And how can I learn and how can I grow? Um, and that's why I, I, that's why I love the growth mindset piece because it just really, it appreciates that we're all human and even health practitioners like you and me who talk about mindset and who talk about self-talk, uh, we can still have places to grow and places to learn and, you know, and you just proved that. And I proved that with my group coaching all the time. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, all this talking, it, it, it makes me um, uh, think back to a, a blog post I once did. And I also did a video on this. Um, and, 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 oh, before we get uh, for farther with that, for those who are just tuning in, I'm talking with Kathleen uh, Trotter, personal trainer, nutrition coach, and life coach. And you can find more information at KathleenTrotter.com. All right. So want to get that, make sure we say that a couple of times for the people to come in and do all that good stuff. All right. So right now we're talking about mindset. And uh, for those also, if you're here for the first time, top fitness strategies, my company is all about the fitness over 50 crowd. I, I, I focus on the folks who do not want to show off their body on stage. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but not everyone's goal is to that. My, my, my I tell people to be want to look better, feel better, gain some confidence. All right. And yeah. And have that functional fitness to go through life without injuring yourself, to play with your grandkids, to do the sport that you want to do. Listen, my dad's 75. He plays hockey four days a week. My mom does yoga. I have wow. clients who are 80. Uh, yeah. I have eight clients who are 80, four clients right now who are 86. I have one client who's 99. Like it's just, you know, if you get into the habit of moving your body, you can just keep going. And it makes you feel like so much more confident, so much more alive, gives you more energy, gives you more independence, mm -hmm. um, and mainly allows you to be the person that you want to be. It's very hard to be your favorite version of yourself if you're in pain, right? Um, or if you have low energy, or if you're not moving, if you're not sleeping, like all of these things. It's really about mm -hmm. how we feel in our own bodies. Absolutely. And it's funny you said that because my, my, my mother is in, in, her, in her early 80s. I'll leave it at that because she doesn't want me talking. About <laughs> that. So she works out with a group of ladies three or four times a week uh, at, a, at a group class. And I call it the old ladies class. I say, you going with your old <laughs> ladies class again today? And I said, I should come over there and, 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 and kick your butts a little bit. And they say, listen there, Sonny. One of the one of the ladies, she's 90 years old. She says, you come to my class and I'll kick your ass myself. She tells, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> All I said, that well, we'll that they're, they're moving, bit. right? <laughs> they just, that's right. That's it's right. just so great that they're moving. And it's nice that they have the social interaction as well, because that's the best part about if you can connect exercise to more things than just, as you said, being on stage and showing off your body. Like if you have more of a why connected to it. So if mm -hmm. you get the positives of seeing your friends or being out in nature, or, you know, a lot of my clients will go for walks and listen to podcasts. So you're getting that, that it's a, it's not just the exercise. It's so much more. And we know the importance of social interaction, right. And mm -hmm. loneliness and the, the negative health effects of, of being lonely. Um, so if you can do something with a group of friends, or if you can go out, you know, walking or running with friends or play a sport there's just so many more things that you can get from exercise than we think like we really think of this narrow box of exercises like well you go to the gym you lift weights you're doing it for this aesthetic reason 
Uh, mm -hmm. But it's so easy to fall off your horse if those are the only reasons that you're doing it. And as soon as you can connect it to something bigger, you know, friendship, uh, community, feeling functionally fit, you just have so many more reasons to actually follow through and do it. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's fantastic. And that's exactly what I, what I tell people. You have to enjoy it. First of all, uh, people say, well, I, I, I don't enjoy lifting weights. Great. Find something else. Uh, or I don't enjoy yeah. going for a bike ride or a walk. Great. We'll find something else. The key yeah, is yeah. to do something you enjoy, but the key is to do yeah. something because your body is not designed yes, to stay yes. on the couch all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what I would say is I would tweak what you just said when I talk to my clients and I say two things. I say, you have to find something you enjoy or at least something you don't despise. Um, and you have to find a reason to do, to do it. So let me back up. Mm -hmm. You don't always enjoy something at the beginning. So when I started right. exercise, I spent the first half of my life, I was overweight. I'm six feet tall. I was awkward in my own body. Uh, we moved around a lot. And um, I just, I didn't like exercise. And there were so many things that I despised. Like, you know, my mom tried me to get to do ballet and softball and all these things. Mm -hmm. And the way that I started exercising was my mom said, okay, we're going to take you to the YMCA where the demographic is sort of over 40 and under five. And you're going to walk on the treadmill. So did I enjoy it? Did I love it? No, but was the price of admission low enough that I could pay it? And did I not despise it? Yes. So finding that thing that I didn't despise that I would do that was convenient enough and enjoyable enough. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing it more. And then I actually did start to really enjoy it. And then I started to run and lift weights. And so it was a positive upward spiral. So I don't want to people to hear, oh, I have to find the thing that I enjoy. Because sometimes that's actually too much to ask. You okay. have to find the thing that's enjoyable enough that you will do it. Or maybe it's something that you only enjoy a little bit, but because it's with friends, you enjoy it more, right? So it has to be doable. It has to be realistic. And often the more you do it, the more you like it. So that's the first thing. And second of all, sometimes you can find a way to make yourself do things because you like a different aspect. Meaning my okay. dad loves hockey, loves it. But as he's gotten older, it's harder for him to have the sort of balance and the mobility and the strength to play okay, hockey. So right. he hates doing balance exercise. He hates doing ankle, you know, mobility stuff. But he can make himself do the things that he hates because he loves hockey. So you have to kind of play some games with yourself. You have to say, okay, well, what do I like enough to do it consistently? Or what do I love so much that then I will do some other things to make myself able to do the thing I love? Like I love to run. It's my thing. So mm -hmm. I do physio and strength work. I don't actually like really doing strength work to be brutally honest, but I do it because if I don't, then I get injured running. So the, the key is that motion has to be non-negotiable. How you move is up to you and how Ooh, you make like yourself that. move is up to you. And it has to be convenient and realistic and enjoyable enough that you will do it on a consistent basis. Because if you do not start, you will never become a love. And things do become, like when I first started, as I said, I would walk, I hated running. But you know, a couple of years into it, um, I started running with friends and I've done, mm -hmm. then I did Ironmans, I did marathons, like, and it turned into my love. But if I hadn't have worked through the discomfort of doing something that was sort of fine, like I didn't hate walking, I didn't love it, I right, didn't hate right. it, it was the thing I would do, I would never have spiraled into what I have now, which is an unbelievable love of movement. So again, movement has to be a non-negotiable. It doesn't have to be exercise. It just has to be movement. But how you move is up to you. And it can't be this unrealistic, like, oh, I'm going to go for two hours. I'm going to run for two hours. Oh, but you don't even like running. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm going to make myself run for two hours. Like, no, you're not going to. If you hate it, you won't do. Exactly. Exactly. I, uh, uh, this is 20, 25 years ago. I, I had moved from, I, and I li currently live in Indiana, but I was living in Indianapolis at the time and I moved to Cleveland for the company I was working for. And this is before I got into uh, uh, personal training and everything else. I said, well, I'm going to the gym. I, I'm going to hire a trainer. So I went there and they, they paired me up with, with a nice young lady, very knowledgeable. She was a good 10, 15 years younger than I was. I was in my forties at the time. And mm -hmm. she put me through a, a, a one hour workout that she did. And at the end, I'm just looking at her. She goes, what? I said, we got to do something else. She says, why? I said, because yeah, I, didn't not, not really did. Did. I didn't enjoy what we yeah. just did. And I won't do this on my own. She goes, well, that's what I want you to do. I told her, I won't do it. I don't like it. We got to find something yeah. that I like. So that's what, yeah. and, and it just that's, triggered everything. Yeah, that's very wise. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's yeah. very wise. And it's part of what a good coach will do, right? Is they will meet you where you are and mm -hmm. put the personal in personal training. Uh, and the trick to remember everybody listening is that, you know, where you start is not where you end. It's just where you start. So you have to be like sort of radically accept where you are so that you can progress if you want to. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to get great. So you never know what you're going to like in five years or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. Um, but you know that if you don't start moving now, you're never going to like any of it because you're never going to have anything to tweak and grow. Or um, I love a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he talks about this idea that you standardize so that you can optimize, uh, meaning like you standardize that you are moving so that you can optimize as you go. Right. So walk for 10 minutes every day. And then once you're doing that, then you can make it 15 or you can add some intervals or you can add some weight. But if you're not doing anything, you have nothing to tweak. So in Kathleen language, it's just, just start so you have something to tweak. People get really wrapped up in finding the perfect program. And it's like perfect doesn't exist. And if you just wait so long to find perfect, you're just never going to do anything. So you have to meet yourself where you are. And so people get caught up again about this, like, well, I shouldn't be so unfit or I, you know, this isn't good. Or they're so upset about where they are that they're not realistically meeting themselves where they are. And then they just do nothing or they do too much and they get injured. Right. So just say to yourself, like, what is my current, like no judgment, just as data with the knowledge that you can grow with consistency, be mm -hmm. like, what, where am I in my health and wellness? Like really objectively speaking, like just purely like step back. You're an alien looking from outer space. Okay. That alien has seen you do nothing for three years. You've sat on your sofa. Okay. That's yeah. where you are. So go for a 10 minute walk, right? Like, yes. Um, uh, like you have to be that analytical about it. And then once you've done 10 minutes, you can do 15, but don't pretend that you should be doing you know, an hour long run. You shouldn't, you haven't moved off the sofa for three years, whatever exactly. that is. Right. So be that alien, look down at yourself, have some perspective, analyze where you are, analyze where you want to get to find something that's realistic and do it. And slowly, but surely, you know, step by step. Um, I just watched the mm -hmm. Whitney Houston movie. And, and so in the words of Whitney Houston, it's like step by step, day by day, you know, little by little or whatever that song <laughs> is, you know, you get yeah, to yeah, where yeah. you're going. Um, <laughs> And right. So it's like it's it's baby baby steps. Oh, absolutely. And and you, and you, you trigger something that I've, I, I've been saying this for years, being a trainer. Uh, people say, well, how can you motivate me? I said, I cannot motivate you. In other words, I can't get you off the couch. Once you get yourself off the couch, I can come in and I can fuel everything, fuel that motivation. But I can't get you off the couch. But once you're off the couch, we can get that five minute walk in make it a 10 minute walk and, mm -hmm. and, and add on to it. But to get started, yeah. you've got to do that on your own. I can't help you with that one. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. So I would actually even go one step further and say motivation doesn't matter. So motivation is akin to an emotion. It comes and it goes. Okay. Um, health and wellness has to be like a job. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't want to go to work, guess what? You go to work. I mean, obviously, sometimes you take a sick day or you take a vacation, but you don't sort of wake up and be like, oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, well, I'm not going to go. I'm not, mo I'm not motivated to go to work today. Oh, well, I'm just going to stay in bed. Like you don't say that or you don't say, oh, my child needs breakfast. Oh, well, I'm not motivated to give, you know, little Timmy breakfast. I'm just going to stay in bed. Like it doesn't work. Life doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to have that's why you have to have that bigger why. And that's why you have to have systems in place. So when you're not motivated, it doesn't actually matter. So what I say to people is when you do have those moments of motivation, that's great. You know, January 1st or your birthday, mm -hmm. use those moments to set up systems that will constrain your future self. So, you know, to use your mom, set up an exercise class that you do with friends, because guess what? I'm sure your mom is not always motivated to go to that class, but she goes because her friends are waiting. Right. 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 Get an exercise buddy, get a personal trainer. Um, do you know, decide that you and your husband or your wife are going to do food prep on Sundays during the afternoon so that you have healthy food waiting for you for the week. Like, I don't care what it is. Set your exercise clothes out the night before so that when you wake up in the morning and you're tired, they're just there. I act often I'll sleep in my exercise clothes if I know I have to work out at like 430 in the morning because it's just like one, you know, fewer steps. Um, so use motivation for what it is like a galvanizing force for sure. But mm -hmm. motivation is going to leave you. It's going to leave you. That's just how emotions go. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Um, and eventually the goal is to have as more and more healthy habits that kind of just carry you along. 
Okay. Um, but until then, you have to set up those systems that constrain the future less motivated, more lazy, more grumpy, more angry. I just had a fight with my boss. I want to go, you know, I don't want to go to my workout. I want to get drunk kind of, you know, thought process. And then you think, mm -hmm. oh, well, I actually can't do that because, you know, I'm booked in to go to this Pilates class with five of my girlfriends. Well, I better go to that. You know, like that's a <laughs> system that's set up, right? So um, a lot I of like times that. health and wellness is just knowing that you are going to feel unmotivated in the future and then saying like, okay, so what am I going to do when I'm unmotivated? Like, that's why I don't have chocolate in my house. Cause I love chocolate. It's not that I don't eat chocolate, but if I'm going to have chocolate, I have it at a restaurant or I have it on my birthday or I have it at my mom's. But if I have it in my house, you when it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm exhausted, I'm going to eat it all. So I don't let myself have it in my house because I know one day I'll eat it. So why would I put myself in that situation? <laughs> That's a good right? Point. Because I would just say, well, right now I'm not motivated. I'm not motivated to stick to my healthy eating. Oh, well, let me shove my food in my face. So I have those moments when I'm not motivated. But guess what? There's nothing in my house. Look, I can shove my face with carrots if I want to. Like, there's nothing <laughs> in my house, right? Like, and I'm not saying that your listeners have to follow my rules. It's not that my rule is a better or a better or worse way to be. It's just that mm -hmm. it works for me. So everybody listening has to think, okay, when I'm not motivated next Tuesday or when I've had a fight with my husband or my wife or my kids are being annoying or I'm exhausted, right. what are the things that are going to make sure that I move my body when I don't want to, because there's going to be so many moments when I don't want to, but I got to be a professional. You just got to show up. Man, that is fantastic. That is I've never, never, I've never thought of it that way, but that's, that's, that's fantastic. All right. I want to change directions just slightly. Uh, and, okay. and, because, and the reason it is because I got a list of questions here. I, 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 I typed them out. So I want to use a couple of them. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Got it. I love it. I love questions. On your website, on your website, you have, the term stop shooting and shooting, not, not the other word, but should in just start. Yeah, should in, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yeah. I think a lot of times we get in this mindset uh, that's so unhelpful. It's very comparison driven. It's very like, well, you know, I should be losing weight or I should be exercising. Uh, and it's not that those things aren't true. Maybe you should, maybe it would objectively be better for you to lose some weight, or maybe it would be objectively better for you to walk more. But my point is, is less, is that you have to find it intrinsically from the inside. You have to say like my values and my integrity is X and mm -hmm. I'm going to do these activities. I'm going to take these actions because they align with my values. And often when we're shooting ourselves, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. It's not productive like we're doing that almost instead of doing the action uh, we're looking on social media and we're thinking oh that person's so much thinner than me or fitter than me or wealthier than me or has a better boyfriend or has a better what life and it's like oh i should have that and it's 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 unproductive what's productive is to say okay these are my goals how do i make the goal okay these are the actions i need to take uh, and it's from inside of you and it's very action oriented versus emotionally judgmental so i'm not against productively, you know, comparing yourself from where you are now to where you want to be. Right. But I am against this idea of um, unproductive comparison, like comparison is the thief of joy, right? Like that's that quote. Um, and so often, it's also just a lie. Like if you look on Instagram, so Anne Lamont, she's an author, and she has this phrase that we often compare our warts to other people's makeup face right? Meaning we are so aware of all of our inner thoughts and in our struggles. And we look at people on Instagram or on the street or our colleagues, and they, they look so perfect, but it's just because we don't mm -hmm. know them. We don't know their struggles. And so when we get caught in this comparison trap and this judgment, it turns on this really evil judgment on ourselves. And we get into a really bad, really um, negative loop. And it's, it's, uh, we do that instead of stepping back and saying, okay, who cares what's going on with everybody else? I'm going to thrive in my own lane. I'm going to be the best version of me that I can be. And I'm going to take actions that align with my values. And I'm going to decide who I want. You know, my second book is uh, Your Fittest Future Self. So I'm going to decide who I want my favorite, fitter, stronger future self to be. And then I'm going to align my actions with who that person is. Because who we become in the future is just an aggregate of all the choices we take between now and then. So if you are in that shooting comparison loop, 
most of the time you just don't take any action. It's just, you're just set, you're on the sofa being like, oh, everyone else is better than me. Oh, I should be doing this, but I don't want to because it's like that hard done by frustrated mindset. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so step back, take a pause and think, you know, I'm not comparing myself to other people. I'm deciding what who I want to be and what I want to be. And then I'm saying, okay, if I want to be that person, what are the actions that I need to do? I'm not going to try to be perfect. I'm not going to try to make the per- plan perfect because that's just analysis paralysis. It's just another way of not starting. I'm right. going to say this is the only moment I have control over and I'm going to do something now. Um, I don't know. Does that does that land with you? I think, let me just say one more Absolutely. Like, yeah, gosh, one more better. Okay, one more way better. People sure, okay. use the shooting. I'm just no, no. I just I, I got it in my brain. People okay, use okay. the shooting to feel like they're doing something when all they're doing is talking to themselves in a negative voice. And what I want people to do is stop getting caught in their own negative loops and do something. Literally, say I'm going for a walk. That's that's why you shouldn't shit on yourself because shooting is in your head. We get caught there, we stay there, and we don't act. I want people to act because the only way to change your future you is to act in different ways. Man, no, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Now you mentioned one of your books. I think you said finding your fit. Now you have so, other books, yeah. now, correct? Yeah. So finding your fit is the first one and your mm-hmm. fittest future self is the second one. Uh, and finding your fit is very much based on the philosophy that I experienced finding my fit when I was younger. And it's very much based on my mom saying to me, okay, you know, I've tried so many things with you. I've tried all the things that quote unquote should work for people your age and they just Mm -hmm. don't. We've been trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. So instead of doing all these other things, we're going to find something that works for you. And that's when she took me to the why. So finding your fit's very much about, it's about mindset. It's about something is better than nothing. It's about creating a workout that fits your workout personality. So Are you a gym buddy? Are you a competitive bunny? Are you a busy multitasker? So it's really about making your fit yours and matching the workout to who you are as a person. Um, Whereas then your fitter's future self sort of breaks down um, mindset and nutrition and exercise into these sort of like three table legs of health and you need all three of them. And how do you figure out how to create three strong layers of this table um, as an individual mix that kind of works for you so that you can create the fitter version of the fittest future you, um, that you, that you would like. Fantastic. My word. That's, that's awesome stuff. You also have a, a course and I needed to ask you about this cause I love the title of this <laughs> kick your ass with compassion. That's a course you offer. I love that. So tell us about this course. The, the title is just phenomenal. Probably one of the best titles. I've ever <laughs> Thank you. You know, I just want to give you a a thank you because you did great research for this interview and I really appreciate it. Not everybody does. So you, my hat is off to you and your research <laughs> skills. And so thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so kick your ass with compassion is just this idea that we all have to learn to kick our own ass, like to make ourselves take the action that we need, but we have to do it with compassion because when we do it from a perfectionist lens, it's, it's unhelpful. And there's this difference between um, shame and guilt, right? So shame is understanding your actions as connecting to you as a person and being a bad person and to your Mm -hmm. identity, whereas guilt is analyzing the action. So kick your ass with compassion is really this idea of analyze the action and take the steps that are going to create your fitter you, but like hold yourself to the fire, but do so through the lens of sort of guilt and action versus through the identity of shame. So it's better if I just give you an example. So if you had a child and they came home with like a bad math grade, right? You wouldn't say to them, oh, you're a lazy, you know, never gonna succeed. You know, you're obviously really stupid, you know, with the math, like you would say, oh, okay, interesting. We don't love that you had a bad math grade, but do you need a tutor? Are you being bullied? Um, so you would hold their toes to the fire. You'd kick their ass as in like, you you wouldn't say, oh, well, who cares? We don't care about your math grade. Right. Um, but you also wouldn't say, because you're stupid, this is why you got a bad math grade. And the problem with health and wellness is often we... Either we don't hold ourselves accountable, and when we do try to hold ourselves accountable, we do it with this shame base. It's like, oh, well, you're lazy. You didn't work out again because this is just, you know, you're never going to be fit. Like it feels very um, identity based, Mm -hmm. so that 
it's very hard to course correct because it's like, oh, you know, I said I wasn't going to have sugar, but I just had a piece of cake. Well, I must be destined to just be overweight. Well, I might as well have five more pieces of cake, right? So that's the shame base. And we have to learn to say, okay, well, I said I didn't want any sugar. I had some sugar. That's not great. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to kick my own ass, but I'm going to do it with a compassionate lens that says, okay, we're all human. What do we learn from this experience? Did you have sugar because you didn't get enough sleep last night? Did you have sugar because you didn't have enough protein at lunch? Did you have sugar because you were in a social situation and you were a little bit anxious? Like, is it that you have to deal with your social anxiety? Um, so the course really teaches you how to find the balance between holding yourself accountable, but doing so with a compassionate, caring, almost like parental way of interacting versus doing so with a, you're always destined to be lazy and unhealthy. So why even try kind of attitude, which is often how we talk to ourselves. It kind of circles back to what we started with this idea of mindset and self-talk. Right, uh, right. Yeah. Mindset and self-talk. We have to learn to talk to ourselves and say, yeah, you're, you made a mistake and you're going to make a mistake, but let's learn from it. Let's course correct. Um, and let's kick your ass because you're worth it. It's worth it to make you do the walk or to do the weights or to go play tennis, whatever it is. Um, but I'm doing that. I'm talking to myself with compassion because I love myself and I respect myself, um, not because I hate myself um, and not because I have this evil belittling roommate in my head. Wow. That's great stuff. So I, I only asked for 30 minutes of your time. We're just a little bit over, but I, 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 how, so if somebody wanted to get this course, this kick yes. your ass course or one of your books, go ahead and, and tell us how people can get these and, and what's expected of them and, and what you provide and do all your, your, your stuff that you need to plug here. Yeah. So my website is KathleenTrotter.com and the course is on the website. I offer it one to two times a year. Normally, the, I always offer it every November with the idea being that let's set ourselves up so that when January comes, we're really in a good place to have a really good year. Um, and it's five weeks and it's normal sort of like November so that you also enter the holiday season with a really good like set of tools and strategies to maintain okay. your health throughout the holidays. Sometimes I also offer it in like um, April, kind of May to set yourself up for success over the summer. Um, and yeah, you can get the books through my website. You can email me, you can get the books um, in Canada. We have uh, amazon.ca. I don't know if it's on amazon.com. Um, oh, yeah. and yeah, but you can always contact me. I'm on social media at uh, fit by Kathleen T on Instagram and Facebook. Um, yeah. And just, you know, I love talking about health and wellness. So any questions, concerns, suggestions, anything that people have, just reach out and, um, I will always get back to them. And also all these, all the stuff that you mentioned will be in the show notes, whatever platform you're watching and or listening to this on, check the show notes. Now, here's something I didn't know. You said you're in Canada. Where, where in Canada? Oh, yeah. So um, I'm in Toronto, Canada. And note uh, about the show notes, I'll send you um, the, both the, the books we talked about, the um, Atomic Habits and Mindset. I do these like reviews on my website and I take the sort of main takeaways of books I've loved and apply them to health and wellness. So mm -hmm. I'll send you those links as well. And then you can post those. So if people Fantastic. are kind of interested in those books. Um, and there's also a book that I love um, by Kristen Neff and her work is all on compassion. So if, if the people listening were like, oh, that's sort of interesting. What does that mean? Self-compassion. Um, I have one of those reviews of her book as well. So I'll send you those links. You can post those in the show notes. And uh, yeah, I'm in Toronto, Canada. Fantastic. Little known fact about Andrew. I was born in Toronto. Yay. What? <laughs> oh my God. What, what hospital? Do you remember which hospital? It'd be hilarious. Uh, if we were I just remember it was, we, my family moved away when I was four years old. I've always told, I think it was okay. general hospital. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I have to talk to my mom about that. She'll tell you. That, okay. Yeah. Ask. I would think that'd be I don't hilarious. Remember I was, I was born, born in Wesley Hospital. Okay. I'm an old man now. Far back, but hey, go Leafs! All right, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yes, go Leafs! Yes. Oh All my right. goodness! Well, that's so much fun. I'm so glad that we connect over both our birth, our birthplace, and also over our love of the health and wellness. Absolutely. Now, um, you're always invited back to the show. Uh, ho hopefully, I, I I did a good enough job compared to the other fine folks you, you, you've been with. You're welcome back anytime. And I, I want to reserve the right to, to ask you to come back another time as well. So we can talk. I would about absolutely, that. I would absolutely adore that. And I also just want to put out that how about the first person who comments about this in your social media, um, okay. I will mail them one of, one of my books. So I'll put that out as an offer. 
So Fantastic. they just have to say something about it, what something that they enjoyed or, you know, share it with somebody or whatever. And then they can let me know if they want the first or the second book and I will mail it to them. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you guys are listening on the social media, whatever platform you're watching in or listening is on, first person to comment, there you go. All right. Fantastic. Kathleen, thank you so much for being a guest on Top Fitness Strategies. Uh, once again, uh, the, the, wherever you can find listening to this, look at the show notes, contact Kathleen, um, do all the good stuff. Fantastic. So I will stop it here. But once again, thank you for being our guest. Fantastic. This is Andrew and Kathleen. Top Fitness Strategies and Top Fitness Strategies presents. So until next time, ciao.